The Green Lantern Season 2 Issue 5 heads to the HQ of the Super Watch, where Hyperman meets with the Lanterns, who tell him that the Attorney Glass was stolen from Hal Carr's trophy room. Maxima can believe something like this would have happened, saying that they are happy to combine their forces in any way to help the Lanterns, showing them the boom tube to Orbitropolis. On asteroid Juno near Orbitropolis, a Power Lord is confronted by the Green Lanterns, who demand he answer their questions about the stolen Attorney Glass. Hyperman joins them, smashing Macandro, Power Lord's goon, away as Power Lord himself escapes, asking his people to forgive him as he instantly is binded by the Green Lantern's constructs. Hyperman disappears as on Earth, the disguised Hyperman meets with Ali, telling her about the amazing museum exhibit. He continues to call her Miss Astra, which confuses her, causing Ali to tell her to keep calling her Ali. Hyperman doesn't care about it, wanting to give her a diamond, which he will make by crushing coal. Grabbing Astra's hand, he begins crushing it, hurting her and telling her that because of the 750,000 pounds of pressure he's about to exert on her hand, she will go into shock. He says that the Snoopy reporter was always correct and he really wasn't Craig Quentin. He's his evil alter ego who has surfaced thanks to the Emerald Wavelength Earthite poisoning. He is soon met by the real Astra who tells him not to do whatever he's about to do since Green Lantern is right there with him and Power Lord helped her trap him in a time point. So they need to act quickly if they are to take down the hero and kill him. In the present, Hyperwoman says her husband was exposed to radioactive Xeno minerals and it made him sadistic, but he's hero to billions and she's going to keep it that way. She uses her heat vision to burn Hal's ring, melting parts of it and causing him to smash her with a construct. The ring is hurt badly, but Hal tells it to stick with him and look for a weakness as Hyperman blasts him with his heat vision. The ring says that it can't take another hit as the hero knows his ring can make a giant hand construct, which it does, using it to grab a gas truck and smash Hyperman with, exploding the truck on him. Hyperwoman asks Hyperman how difficult can it be, calling him an idiot as the villain burns. She says that she killed his ring for Hyperman, so it can't be that hard to stop him now, saying this is all the man's fault since he couldn't wait a single yocto second until after their son's wedding to indulge his violent vices on yet another planet. Hyperman knows that she shouldn't even be there, but Hyperwoman cuts him off, telling him something is happening on the throne world and she is the only one who can stop it getting out of control. She hits him, calling the villain pathetic as he asks why he has to do this alone. Hyperwoman demands he deals with Hal, leaving him the dog to help. Hal Mimol is contacted by the Guardians, who say backup is on the way and he is not to engage the suspect without his ring. Hal wonders if this is how Lantern Vray died, telling his ring to hang in there. The ring manages to get information on the Hyper family, telling Hal that they require the power of an orange sun to fuel their superpowers, but the Hyper suit the villain wears compensates for the yellow sun energy of Earth. Hal tells the ring that they aren't done yet, but when they've given everything and there's no more left to give, they keep on giving. Hal attacks Hyperman with a flurry of punches, injuring the villain who still stands. Hal smashes him in the face, telling him that that's for Lantern Vray, taking out his frustrations with Hyperwoman hurting his ring on the man. Hal is suddenly racked with pain by Clipso the Hyperdog, whose bark deafens Hal as he bites him. Tops suddenly arrives, attacking the dog as Hal warns him that the animal is strong. Clipso bites down on Tops, who blasts him with his lasers as the other bird people arrive to protect Uncle Hal. The beings blast the dog, turning it into ash. Hyperman becomes furious at the dog's death, blasting the birds with his eye lasers before turning on Hal, who says that in a couple of months the dog will be back on its feet. The villain blasts Hal, wanting to get back to business. He leaves Hal, returning to Ali and telling her she was right about about him being Hyperman, and he is hyper sick of people like her who try and invade his private thoughts. He grabs her hand, saying that when he shows her the real Hyperman, that's when the screaming starts. He begins to squeeze her head, but nothing happens as Ali, who thinks the man is still Craig Quinton, is crazy, demanding to know why the creep is squeezing her head. Hyperman realizes that his strength is gone, noticing his power regulating costume is in tatters. Hal returns, breaking 
breaking the man's nose and jaw as he arrests him for the multiple homicides on multiple planets, and for the murder of Lantern Vray. As Hal officially arrests him, the time point around him ends and the Flash and the Yellow Lanterns return, saying that he was trapped in a time bubble. Hal, however, is already unconscious from the fight. The Lanterns find out that his ring is dead and he is seriously injured, so they call for a medic as the Guardians know that because of this, the Ultra War has begun. The Green Lantern Season 2 Issue 5 was a very fun Jack Kirby throwback as Hal fights an alternate reality Superman in a really smart way. I adore how this series continues to combine wacky DC Universe stuff like the Hyper Family from the 60s era Superboy comics, Jack Kirby inspired art and aliens, and pretty plain and by the book police procedural stuff. It goes so well together yet when you say it out loud it really shouldn't because it's two opposite things and they should not go together. But Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp continued to do a fucking amazing job at making it all work. The art in this issue was absolutely fantastic. Again, it was a throwback to Jack Kirby with a lot of the issue having bright kind of fourth world colors and look to it, which looked really damn good. I'm really excited for this upcoming Ultra War as we head into the back half of The Green Lantern Season 2. I'm going to give this issue a 10 out of 10.